Jonathan Wilkes returns with more camcorder calamities. New You've Been Framed, tomorrow at 10 to 7, here on ITV1. Good afternoon and welcome to the latest West Country news and sport. Good afternoon. Coming up, reports on this afternoon's football matches involving Plymouth, Torquay and Yeovil. Plus highlights from Brickfields where Plymouth Albion faced their biggest test of the season so far. They were hoping to cause an upset against top of the table Worcester. But first, police are continuing to question a 39-year-old man about the disappearance of missing Devon teenager Elysia Eborn. There's still no sign of the 18-year-old who hasn't been seen since last Friday. Eight days on and still there's no sign of Elysia. As hopes of a positive outcome begin to fade, the search is being stepped up. Teams from the Dartmoor Rescue Group today joined the operation. The searches were being extended today. We're bringing in specialist search resources and uh, increasing numbers of searches. How big an operation is this now? Uh, the search operation has probably doubled in size overnight and uh, we've got about 80, 80 people out assisting with the searches. Police closed off roads around Bickley, just on the edge of Dartmoor. They also closed part of the Plym Valley cycle track. The areas they're focusing on are close to the bus route that Alicia should have taken. The police search this afternoon has concentrated on an area of around nine square miles behind me. It's rough terrain with gorse thickets and deep wooded valleys. The entire area has been cordoned off to preserve any possible crime scenes. Police today applied for extra time to question a 39-year-old man arrested on Thursday. They wouldn't confirm speculation he's a bus driver. Officers now have until 10 o'clock tomorrow night before they release him or charge him in connection with Alicia's disappearance. Duncan Slito in Bickley for West Country News. A man appeared in court in Exeter today charged with the murder of a 69-year-old woman. Alan Wickenden from Crediton was charged last night in connection with the death. The body of his wife Janet was found near Cowley on Thursday morning. He was remanded in custody. Local Government Minister Nick Rainsford got a rough ride today when he arrived in Exeter for a meeting about council tax funding. Pensioners told him they simply can't afford to pay big increases in bills. A rowdy reception from a normally sedate group of people. But these pensioners weren't taking any chances. They wanted to make sure their message was heard loud and clear. This movement must grow in order to make the government clear that we're not going to accept lower living standards. There's all this business with the poppy day, for the, all this respect for the dead, but there's no respect for the living. Many councils in the southwest say they're not being given the government grants they need and they've had to increase taxes to cover costs. But they realise it's not a long-term solution. Well, the solution in my book is scrap the, the council tax and replace it with a system which recognises the ability to pay. But the government minister says it's the councils who need to make the changes. So I've been saying to local authorities, you've got to budget prudently. If they don't, and there are unreasonable tax increases in the coming year, we will have to use our council tax capping powers. With an election likely within the next two years and feelings running high, council tax is going to become an increasingly important issue for politicians and voters alike. And if bills rise steeply again, the anger seen here today could be demonstrated at the ballot box. Tiffany Royston, Exeter, for West Country News. One person has died and another has been airlifted to hospital with very serious injuries following a three-vehicle crash on the A38 near White Cross in Cornwall's Glim Valley. The road's closed in both directions and is likely to remain so for several hours. That's the news. Now here's Jeff with the sport. Well, it's been a disappointing afternoon for Plymouth Argyle. They've been knocked off the top of the second division table after losing 3-0 at Queen's Park Rangers. Watching this one for us at Loftus Road was Tony Lockwood. How Argyle could have done with the services of leading goal scorer David Frio. Goals have not been a problem until today, that is. Graham Coughlin with their best chance, a downward header to drop the wrong side of the post. Rangers opener arrived just after the half-hour mark. 
it was Kevin Gallon's long-range free kick that somehow drifted past keeper Luke McCormick. The decisive second, stroked home by Tony Thorpe. Gallon made the game safe with the best of the lot. Plymouth boss Paul Sturrock will hope it's no more than a temporary hiccup in a season rich in promise. Nearly 3,500 made the trip to West London, only to witness Argyle lose top spot and by convincing scoreline. It's been a better afternoon for our sides. In the third division, Torquay United have put their recent bad run behind them to record an impressive 3-1 win over Cheltenham. And we can now cross to play more, where we're joined by Martin Dean. Martin, is it a little bit premature to say Torquay have turned the corner? It probably is, but uh, this was a vital victory for them, having suffered three successive defeats. It was important that they got back to winning ways. The man they have to thank for that was David Graham, who might have joined Plymouth Argyle in the week. Torquay fans will be delighted he turned down the move to home park. He put them in front after 51 minutes, and though Damien Spencer then equalised for Cheltenham, it was uh, Graham again with a, a superb finish who put Torquay back in front. He might have gone on to get a hat-trick, he had a header against the bar, and he then turned provider, setting up the final goal for Alex Russell five minutes from time. OK, well, thank you very much for that, Martin. Well, Yeovil Town once again showed that come the end of the season, they will be there or thereabouts in the third division promotion race. This afternoon, they beat Southend 4-0 at Hewish Park, as Tim Walsh reports. The Oval dominated the early stages of the match, and it was no surprise when they took the lead after 32 minutes. Lee Elam making his home debut, the on-loan winger, scored from the edge of the area with the aid of a deflection. It was soon 2-0, Lee Johnson's perfect through ball found Darren Way, who calmly finished for his second goal of the season. Two minutes later, it was 3-0, Jake Edwards was fouled on the edge of the area, and from the resulting free kick, Lee Johnson curled the ball into the top corner of the net. Only one goal in the second half, it came early on when Yeovil were awarded a debatable penalty. Lee Johnson wasn't complaining and fired in his second goal of the afternoon. So, a comfortable win for the Glovers, but the Royal Test will come next week, away to promotion favourites, Hull City. And another great win for Exeter City in the conference. They were 3-0 up inside 16 minutes. That was thanks to Alex Janine and two goals from informed Sean Devine. Gareth Sheldon added a fourth midway through the second half. And in the Dr Martins League Premier Division, Newport County nil, Dorchester nil, Western Supermare 1, Tiverton 3. So Tiverton keeping their uh, informed run together. And top of the table, Weymouth 1 Eastbourne nil in the Western Division, Taunton nil, Redditch two. Screwfix Direct League Premier Division, Backwell one, Biddeford two, Bishop Sutton three, Bridgewater two, Bridporter one, Welton three, Brislington one, Odd Down one, and plenty of goals at Elmore where it finished Elmore one, Froome eight. Exmouth 3, Barnstable 0, and another high-scoring game at Torrington. Torrington 3, Canesham 3. In the 1st Division, Bristol Manor Farm 1, Street 1, Carn 1, Willand 3, Larkhall 1, Ilfricombe 1, Shepton Mallet 0, Cadbury Heath 2, Wellington 2, Corsham 3, the game from Westbury against Minehead didn't take place this afternoon, and Western St John's 3, Chard 1. And just the one result from the Carlsberg South Western League. And it was in Plymouth. It was Plymouth Parkway 1, Tavistock 3. Well, rugby now and England with a strong Cornish presence in their lineup take on France, of course, tomorrow in the semi final of the World Cup. A little nearer to home, Penzance Newlin entertained the Premiership side Saracens in the sixth round of the Pargen Cup. Now, this afternoon, Plymouth Albion were in league action. They were up against top of the table Worcester at Brickfields and lost by 17 points to 43. Well, Worcester have spent heavily over the last few years and are most people's favourites to win National League One. Despite what the scoreline might suggest, Plymouth Albion made them work hard for long periods at Brickfields. The first half was an entertaining affair with Worcester just having the edge thanks to tries from Darren O'Leary, James Brown and Gary Truman. But Albion showed their battling qualities by scoring a couple of tries before the break. The first was this great individual effort from Lee Robinson and the second came from a rolling mall which was finished off by Danny Thomas. So at half time Plymouth trailed by just 17 points to 22. It was a different story in the second half, though, as Worcester began to take control. Darren O'Leary scored his second try of the match just 46 seconds after the break, and that try secured the visitors a bonus point, and they never really looked back. 
Well, in National League 3 South, Redruth lost at high-flying North Walsham, but Launceston continued their climb up the table with a narrow victory at Western Super Mare. Well, that's it for now. We'll have a comprehensive roundup of all the weekend action in West Country Live on Monday. And our next news bulletin is just before 2 o'clock tomorrow. From Jeff and from me, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, good evening. After all that wind and rain from the last few days, where the weather now seems to be on a more stable footing, our weather window shows the scene in the centre of Exeter with the sky is overcast, but there is a stretch of blue there. Very light winds as well, with the branches of the trees barely moving at all. And if we look at the pressure chart, we can see that low pressure is still in charge of the weather over Britain and northern Europe, but pressure is building out to the west. And that means saddle weather is likely to be with us for the rest of the weekend. Overnight, the skies will remain mostly clear with just a few showers dotted around the coasts. Clear skies means falling temperatures down to 2 Celsius in places. So that means a patchy frost, especially in sheltered valleys and up on moorland areas. Winds are staying very light and coming in from the northwest. Sunday morning kicks off bright and sunny, again with a few showers breaking out, mostly in coastal areas. It's going to be quite a chilly start to the day, though, and the temperatures, they're not going to be in any hurry to reach double figures. In the afternoon, well, there's plenty more sunshine, and those showers will all but have died away. Temperatures in the sun will climb eventually to quite a mild 11 Celsius, 52 Fahrenheit. Winds are still coming in from a northwesterly direction and staying light throughout the day. Looking ahead over the next four days, well, Monday starts off bright, but there is rain on the way later on. That's going to remain overcast for much of the week, and it'll turn windy again. The temperatures, though, will be staying mild, reaching 16 Celsius, 61 Fahrenheit on Tuesday. Here's a view of the tide times for tomorrow with high water at Torquay coming in at 10.06 and 22.35. Sunset is now just after half past four. So there's a clear night ahead with a patchy frost forming. Tomorrow it'll be sunny and mainly dry with a mild afternoon in prospect. That's the weather for now. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Relax this Christmas. This